This is Fred Zeglin with your Workbench Tip of the Month. We thought we'd talk about headspace gauges and a little bit of finesse. This is stuff that you wouldn't normally hear, wouldn't normally discuss, so it's, it should be of some value to you to help you uh, make sure that your tools are exactly what you think they are. Now, when SAMI sets its standards for headspace gauges, they allow a pretty large bracket, much larger than most people would expect. And that allows manufacturers then to choose where they want to lie within those tolerances and the goal, of course, for each manufacturer is to have their firearm work with anybody's ammunition and in any gun from any manufacturer. So if you're mixing ammunition from one company and a gun from another company, they want them to always be 100% reliable. So the reason for that big range is to allow for the interchangeability of everything. Now the headspace gauges are the tool we use to make sure that our gun falls within that same range that the manufacturers are using for ammunition, brass, guns. So because manufacturers can make their gauges in this large tolerance range, it's possible for one manufacturer to choose to be at the absolute minimum and perhaps another manufacturer to be slightly above the absolute minimum. What that does is the difference between the go and the no-go gauge, if you were to mix brands, could conceivably be out of spec. In other words, uh, a normal spec for headspace gauges between the go and the no-go is somewhere between three and six thousandths. Usually the six thousandths gauges are going to be rimmed gauges. In the case of bottleneck, it's usually in the three to five range, so that's what you should be expecting. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the gauges. So when you look at these gauges, they appear to be pretty much the same as far as size, length, shape, and the mistake that some people make is that when they look at the gauges, they think they would measure headspace from the bolt face to the end of the gauge. In the case of a bottleneck cartridge, we measure headspace to a point somewhere along the shoulder that's called the datum line. And the easiest way for us as a gunsmith to measure that is to use some type of a ring gauge. And a ring gauge is simply something circular that will slip down over that angle so that we can measure length. So I use one of two different tools. The first one is a, and actually a bullet comparator. A lot of reloaders have these on their, on their bench. As a gunsmith, I keep them around so I can quickly check, check caliber on ammunition, that sort of thing. And um, what I do is I use, because they're a reamed hole and I can count on them being pretty square, it works perfectly for doing this. Now, it's not going to give me the absolute headspace gauge measurement. What it's going to do is it's going to allow me to measure the difference between these two gauges to see if they have the correct difference of three to five thousandths, which is what we're looking for in a bottleneck case. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do the first one. What we'll do is we'll take, and I'm going to use the largest hole on the comparator. It's a 30 caliber hole. That allows it to, the tip of the gauge actually can get down into the hole enough so that I'm measuring on the shoulder. And that's important. We don't want to be measuring from the end of the gauge. Like I said, that's the mistake people make. So all you have to do is measure overall length of the gauge and the comparator that I'm using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to a number, you know, get us set to the measurement, and I'll reset the zero on our tool. And once I have that, then I'll measure the other tool and it'll show us the difference between the two. Okay. All right. Make sure you get back in the same hole. You don't want to change calibers because it'll give you a totally wild number. And this takes a little finesse. You want to make sure you get it square. So I ended up at four and a half thousandths. Now four and a half thousandths is definitely within spec. We're looking at something between three and five. So we're certainly right in there. Now, I want you to remember that when we're talking about this, we're concerned about the differences that might come about as, as a result of mixing gauges from different manufacturers. So you don't need to run to your toolbox and panic and measure everything. You can have faith that the reamer manufacturers know what they're doing and that they produce gauges that are acceptable and will do what you need them to do. This comes down to, again, the issue of mixing from one brand to another because one company might use one tolerance and another use a, perhaps a larger one. So Again, it's simply a way for you to recheck your gauge and make sure it's going to give you the results you're expecting. There is a secondary issue, and um, what that is is when you're talking about P.O. Ackley, uh, his Ackley improved cartridges in the bottleneck uh, arena 
have uh, the same headspace measurement. They are uh, four thousandths apart is what they're supposed to be. And the way he came about doing this is he took a standard go gauge from the cartridge and he ground four thousandths off the head to get a shorter gauge. The idea behind it is to allow the cartridge to be pinched between the junction of the neck and shoulder and the bolt face so that you get nice tight headspace on the, on the factory cartridge so you can fire form it. He accomplished that simply by shortening the gauge. So what, what happens is uh, frequently you have to have, well, you absolutely have to have two go gauges. You have a go gauge that's marked for Ackley and you have a standard go gauge for whatever the parent cartridge was. And again, we have to have that difference of four thousandths. Here we have two different brands that are both supposed to be, we have the standard cartridge and the Ackley cartridge. So we're going to look and see if we have the four thousandths difference. We would measure them exactly as we did with the other. The only difference is I would show you that we would use this tool. It does the exact same thing. I just have a hole that's reamed in it. Both ends have been faced square. And it allows us to do the same thing. We put the end of the gauge into the device and that gives us a stopping point along the shoulder. So we're measuring actual shoulder to bolt face length. So the length of the gauge and the comparator combined isn't really important. That number doesn't matter. What we're concerned with is the difference between the two gauges. So you're going to measure both gauges and we're looking for how much difference between an Ackley go gauge and a standard for cartridge go gauge. That's right, four thousandths. So just keep that in mind. Now you can make these comparators for yourself. Um, you just put them on the lathe, ream it out to a, a diameter that will allow it to slip down the shoulder so that you'll be able to get a measurement. Face the end so that you get an accurate measurement. And if there's some gauges you don't have, you can always rent them from us. I'm Fred Zeglin, and that's your workbench tip for the month.